Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial, we're creating a spring birthday card layout directly in Procreate. So what you see on screen is exactly what we're going to be creating together. As always, the color palette is entirely free. Just tap on the link in the video description. You can download and install it. We're using my watercolor illustration brush set for this entire project, and I will leave a link in the video description to that as well. I'm going to start by creating a brand new canvas that's 1500 pixels by 1500 pixels at 300 dpi. I work in the display p3 color profile but if you're on an older iPad and don't have access to that then the default sRGB color profile is perfectly fine. Okay I've got my brand new canvas and the first thing I'm going to do is set the background color so come to your layers tap on background color and it's the very first one up at the top and the next thing we're going to do is sketch everything out and then we'll paint everything in. In order to sketch this out I'm just going to double tap where black is to get true black and I'm going to be using the sketching pencil brush from the watercolor illustration brush set and this will just make it a lot easier as we move along. You can use any color for this. I like using black because it gives me lots of contrast and I can see things really well. So what I want to do for this layout is have my happy birthday message like right around here and then I want all of my flowers to come around the message and then down I want them to loop around almost like a half wreath and I like it feeling nice and full since it's spring everything is blooming and I want that feeling to come across having it around here I'm going to give myself a little more white space and I kind of like having it curved down but not not too far like right around here. And if you want to clean up your sketch with your eraser tool, you can do that too. The next thing we're going to do is sketch out where all of our flower elements are going to be. And the most important thing you want to remember here is that you want to be changing up your scale. So I like having some really large elements, some medium elements, and just a few small ones. And even though we're using a very limited amount of floral elements, we're actually only using a daisy element that is already bloomed, ones that are just opening up, and then we've got some lilac shaped flowers in here as well. So we're just just keeping all that in mind as we're laying things out. So I always like drawing the largest flowers first and then filling all the gaps in with the smaller elements. So I'm going to start with my daisy elements that are already bloomed since those ones are the largest ones and I will place them kind of sporadically around here. I, I'm going to have just a few really large ones and maybe one down here and then I'll have one up here too. And now I'm going to start putting in some of my smaller ones. So these ones are ones that I've already opened up. And then the rest of these are going to be ones that are closed. So I can notate them as already being opened up like this if I want to. So everything's super clear for me on my sketch layer. Okay, and then these ones are just beginning to open up. Okay, and now I'm going to put in my lilacs. And these ones are our cone-shaped flowers, so they kind of look like that. And then these ones, you can change up the scale on these two if you want. Okay, so as I'm planning this out, I'm basically just looking for filler elements. So I'm filling in these gaps with these elements and also keeping in mind that any extra white space that I have right here, I can fill in with leaves. So we can kind of plot out where these leaves are going to go. And the leaves are the most changeable element because we can have floating leaves, we can have leaves that are attached to the different elements, the floral elements. So they're a great filler element. So I usually leave them for last. I like plotting out where all of my major elements are going to go that are more colorful than the leaves that are going to draw more attention and then I fill in any remaining white space with those leaves. Okay so this is just a really rough sketch um, and we can adjust things as we move along but now I've got a starting point. I already know that I'm going to change the positioning of where my happy birthday is going to go. I want it to be more centered in the white space here. So we'll see how this all works out. I'm going to leave the lettering for last. That way we can kind of see how everything shapes around here and then we can place it exactly where we want it. Next we're going to start painting and I'm going to begin with the largest elements first and then we'll work in the same order basically that we just drew our sketch layer. Layer one I'm going to label sketch. Create a brand new layer. This one's going to be called Daisy. So for these daisies, I'm going to grab the yellow color and I'm going to switch to my medium paint round brush. And we're just going to draw in however many petals that you would like right here. This is your layout, so feel free to do as many as you want. 
So I'm going to come around and paint in the rest of these daisies that have already bloomed, but I also want to show you how I'm drawing the ones that are just opening up. So then this will just be a time lapse of all of this painting. So I wanted you to have an idea before I get going on all of these, how I'm painting these in. So for these ones, let me reduce the opacity of my sketch layer so you can see it a little bit better. For these ones that are just opening up, I usually draw one full petal up at the top and then these ones are curving in a little bit and overlapping a little bit too. And I usually draw about five petals on these. So these lower ones are a little more disconnected because they're beginning to open up, but these ones are definitely tighter together up at the top. And I like overlapping these petals. Okay, so I am going to complete the rest of these daisies all around my layout, so I'll speed up the video and then I'll be back. Now that I've got all of my daisies drawn in, now we're going to add in some final details to them to really bring them to life and make them pop a little bit more. So I'm going to create a brand new layer right above the daisy layer and call this one daisy details. In this one, we're going to grab the orange color and on all of these ones, so the ones that are already opened up, I'm going to switch over to my round liner brush for this and my size of this is about 10% and I'm just going to draw in a few lines here. Okay, and then on the ones that are just beginning to open up, the lines for this one, we're just going to bring them up a little bit and I'm kind of touching on each petal here. And that's all that that one takes. So I'm going to come around and apply this to all of the daisies I've already drawn. Okay, once you have all of those details in on your daisies, the last thing we're going to do is add the centers to them. So I'm just going to create a brand new layer, label this one daisy centers. And for this one, we're going to grab our darkest blue color and we're going to return back to the medium paint round brush. And what we want to do is just make sure that these centers touch every single petal here. That way we don't have any floating petals. If it makes it easier, you can always turn off your sketch layer for this. Let's actually get a preview of how these are looking so far. So I'm just going to come in here and make these centers big enough so they touch all these petals. Okay, now that I've got my centers all set, I can group all of my daisy elements together, all these layers together. So just slide them to the right, hit group, and label this one daisies. So I like adding my stems as one of the final elements. I like painting in all my floral elements first and then I can have my stems kind of intertwine around them. That way I can make sure that my floral elements are the most prominent elements in the layout when you're looking at it. So the next thing we're going to do is paint in our lilacs. So I'm going to turn on my sketch layer, create a brand new layer above the daisies, label this one lilac. And for this one, we're going to be using two blues. The one that we're going to paint down first is our base blue is going to be this light blue color. And all you're going to do is paint a bunch of little dots into this cone. If it makes it easier, just reduce the opacity of the sketch layer a little bit more and just paint in these dots. Okay, once you have your light blue layer down, now we're going to put down a dark blue layer and you can either leave these on the same layer or you can create a new layer right above the lilac layer. Um, I'm going to create a new layer just because I like the ability to erase things if I want to. So I'm going to just label this one dark blue and grab the dark blue and do the exact same thing right on top. Okay, so the last little detail I'm going to add in here, it's totally up to you. You don't have to do this, but I really love the extra texture that it gives the entire piece by doing this. So I'm going to create a brand new layer and just label this one white. And what I like to do is you can either grab the background color or actual white. I'm going to use actual white for this and then grab your sketching pencil and you're going to keep this kind of on the small side. I'm at, I'm at 3% and what you want to do is just draw in just some open circles here. And it looks really subtle, but it's super effective in adding that extra bit of texture. Okay, our lilacs are all done now, so I'm going to group them all together and then label this one lilac. 
All right, and now we can begin painting in all of our stems. And for this one, I'm going to create a brand new layer. I'm going to drag this all the way down beneath the daisies group and label this one stems. I'm going to use the lightest green color for this. So it's the second one on the bottom row. I'm going to switch to the round liner brush and start drawing these in. And some of them will be really easy to tell where they're going to go. Like for this one, I could just have it come right off the edge. The size of this is 10%. So these ones are really easy to tell where they go, but then you'll have options where you can decide if you're going to have one come maybe from over here or over here. It's really up to you. I usually paint these in and then I take a look at everything and then I decide if I need to change the placement of things. So this one's kind of floating upward. So it's okay to have a floating stem here. It could be just a cut flower. And then if I want this one to come this way or to be on a floating stem, I can make those decisions later. So right now I'm, I'm still roughing everything in and then deciding if I want to make changes afterwards. So once you have all of your or most of your stems drawn in, now we're going to preview this and make sure everything is where we want it to be. So I like turning off the sketch layer and zooming out and seeing if everything is feeling comfortable. And the one thing that I noticed is I painted this lilac right here, but its stem would end up crossing this daisy and I don't like the look of having stems crossing right up in the upper left corner. I feel like it's going to take the viewer's attention right over there and I don't want their attention to go up here. So all I wanna do is take this and turn it, but this is made up of multiple groups. So if I come into my lilac group right here, you can see it's made up of these three different layers and I don't wanna to have to go into each layer and move each individual one. So luckily in Procreate, if you're on the latest version of Procreate and your iOS is updated, if you close up the group, you have to make sure the group is collapsed like this and that the group is selected. And then you can draw a selection around it. So if I hit the selection icon up here, make sure that your settings are the same as mine down here or, or it won't work and then you can draw a selection around that element and then select it with the cursor and turn the entire thing at the same time. So that's a way to grab multiple layers if you have a group selected. Okay once you get it where you want it to go deselect and now I can come back down to my stems layer. I still have my light green color selected with my round liner brush and I can just paint in that stem and now I don't have to worry about that being a distraction. So the next thing we need to do is paint in all of our leaves and I'm going to return back to the medium paint round brush for this. I'm going to create a brand new layer right above the stems layer, label this with leaves. And this is going to be what really fills our layout out and makes it come to life. So I'm going to turn the sketch layer back on. So I've got that for reference, but for the most part, you can freehand most of this. So I'm going to start by attaching these leaves to stems of flowers right here and then we'll move on to the free floating ones. Okay, I've got all of these ones drawn in. I'm going to turn off my sketch layer now and fill in the rest of the gaps myself. So there'll be times where you can just add in like a floating leaf to fill in a gap and then other times where you'll have a big gap right here. So for this one, I will just draw in a stem and just fill this one with only leaves, no flowers. Once you have all of your leaves painted in, now we're going to add a little bit of detail to them to really bring them forward. So I'm going to create a brand new layer right above the leaves layer and label this one leaf details. And for this one, we're going to switch to the dark green color, which is the first one on the bottom row. I'm going to switch back to the round liner brush, but reduce the size of it down to about 5%. So on each one of these, we're going to draw a line up, draw a line next to it, a line next to it, and just follow that curvature until you fill the leaf out. Once you have all of your leaf details drawn in, now we're going to add in our hand lettering. So I'm going to create a brand new layer up at the very top, label this one lettering. Okay, and for this one, I'm going to do a much looser style of lettering than I usually do. It's going to look more like handwriting than intentional, beautiful letters uh, because I want this to feel kind of a messy watercolor feel, which we're going to apply the messiness right after this. So I'm going to keep this really, really loose as far as lettering style.
Okay, and I mentioned making this look a little messier. So a really, really easy way to do this is just come down to the bottom. So right above your sketch layer. So I'm going to tap on sketch, create a brand new layer, label this one messy. So what I'm going to do is switch over to my dense wash brush and then change to my dark green color and just paint behind some of these bigger leaves. And it doesn't have to be a lot and it doesn't have to be everywhere. Just a few select places. And as your eye goes around the layout, it'll get the idea. Okay, I'm going to switch to my blue and just grab a few of these lilacs and paint behind them. And then finally, we'll just add in a little bit of orange messiness near some of these daisies. Okay, and then the last thing we wanna do is just add some paint splatter around it. So I'm going to create a brand new layer and label this one splatter. And I'm going to grab my dark blue color, switch to my rounded splatter brush. The size of this is 6%. And then switch to my dark green. I'm going to increase the size a little bit, 8% for this one. And then we can also add in some orange. I'm leaving yellow out because it's a little harder to see. And I like these splatters being a little more obvious than that. And then to make it even more realistic, we're going to add in a watercolor paper texture to the very top. So come up to your lettering layer, create a brand new layer right above it, label this one texture. And we need to use black for this, so double tap where black is to get true black. And then come down here, I'm going to grab the fine tooth paper texture, zoom out, make sure your size is at max, and then paint in one stroke all the way across your canvas until it totally fills up with that paper texture. And then change the blend mode of this to multiply. And now, when we zoom in here, it looks like it was painted on top of real watercolor paper. So that's how to create a spring birthday card layout directly in Procreate. Once again, links to everything mentioned in this tutorial are right in the video description, including the free color palette and the watercolor illustration brush set. If you're interested in learning more about painting watercolor florals and foliage in Procreate, I have an entire course on that, and I'll leave a link in the video description to that as well. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please hit the like button, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you can be notified of new tutorials just like this one in the future. For more Procreate tutorials and freebies, head on over to my site, every-tuesday.com. You can also find me over on Instagram. My handle is every Tuesday. If you try this out and post it there, I would love it if you tag me. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you next week.